One of the important things about the guitar was the forward response or projection. And to be able to control that, I have this little knob that I can pull in or out that I can open and close it. And uh, you could go halfway or whatever you want uh, to see how much of a, an aperture you needed to have. So uh, the forward projection Tuning would help, but we're not here to tune. I'm here to explain what these do. So, the upper and lower bout uh, sound holes, how I could build these and, and the structure of them was not the idea that you could just put a hole in the side of the guitar. Okay, you can't do that without jeopardizing the, the structure of the instrument, the integrity of the of the guitar. And one of the things I learned when I built this was the connection, the structural integrity from one side to the other on the side really matters. So this connection going around uh, needed to be super structured. And the way that I found to do that was to construct a double wall type of construction. You can't see it on this because these two pieces right here are carved ebony. They were blocks of ebony that I carved to make uh, like a Venturi type of port. Uh, so you can't really see the, stri the, the side construction here as you can on my more re recent guitars. But what it did is it allowed me to create any kind of a sound hole, uh, any shape. I chose these shapes because uh, as an elliptical type of design, it was probably the most practical design and the most controllable design. You know, I could put it in any, any type of combination there was. And as the years would go by, I would change and alter the types of, or shapes of sound holes but this was a learning process, the whole thing. This was a real, a real breadboard of ideas that were beginning to take place. And so to be able to open and close them, I, I use a very flexible type of stainless steel, spring steel, and these are stainless. And so they, the contours will change. They're not all the same, so as you move them, especially these, they're two different shapes. So they have to be able to flex and move and follow the contours. So that was a successful idea. Uh, the internal uh, design of it had to be uh, it laid out in a way that it wouldn't impede at all the idea of being an acoustical instrument and having the sensitivity that it has to have. So that's the first and foremost thing, is it really has to perform 100% as an acoustic guitar, as an archtop guitar, and be what it is. All this other stuff is there for a reason. Mm -hmm.